Right, so this is part two. And in this part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a tab group using CommonJS. In the last video, I did a nav group. And this has a lot of things are quite similar to this. But what I'll do to begin with, I think, is I'll show you, for those who don't know, what a tab group is. So I've got the simulator here. So this is a tab group, and these are your tabs. So we've got one, two, and three. You can have up to five here, where the last one will be a more button. And when you click that, any extra tabs that you have will be listed here in like a table view. But that's pretty bad practice, I think. Tab groups are still quite popular. You see them quite a lot. But um, there's, there's other things now that people are doing that are kind of phasing out tab groups a little bit in the bigger apps out there, the more commercial ones, you normally see something where you slide the the screen to the right to reveal a menu or to the left, all these sorts of things. But anyway, that doesn't matter for now. So yeah, so let's have a look. So in app.js, we're requiring this file tabs. And if you remember from the last video, I said a require statement is relative to the resources directory. So if you think of this as resources directory, a folder called control and then a file called tabs.js I've got tabs.js here so if I open that it's just this one function called return tab group that's being exported at the bottom so what we're doing is we're putting that file or module into this variable then we are calling this function from that variable and that function is mm -hmm. this what I just showed you so this function, what the, all this does is this actually creates a tab group and then opens it. So what you do, as I mentioned in the last video as well, CommonJS, you put use strict at the top of your functions, declare all your variables, and then get on with it. So what we've got here is we've got this variable called tab group, which we're creating a tab group and putting it into that variable then what I like to do when I'm doing tab groups is I separate them like this so as you can see there what I've got highlighted is tab 1 there's tab 2 and there's tab 3 and then at the bottom as I mentioned we are then opening the tab group so let's look at we'll just look at one of these because it's, it's tab 1, 2 and 3 it's pretty much exactly the same so what we're doing we're requiring sorry, this file win1 and let's have a look at that quickly. All that is, is this one function being exported, and all that does is return a very simple, just a window. That's all it is. It's just returning a window. One thing to note about this, I guess, is in the last video, the parameters I was putting in like this. So left zero. What I just wanted to show you is you can do them like this or you can use this method here which is the variable dot parameter name and then an equal sign and then what you want the value to be so that there is the equivalent of that I personally prefer this method here but it's just it's up to you really it, does, it doesn't matter I just thought I'd show you a different way of doing it but yeah so what you could do is if this was a really long function and things are happening throughout it you can set variables you could set these parameters within um, different events or functions or whatever and you can change things so that's how you do that yeah so anyway so this is just returning this window so let's go back to here so this variable window one is requiring that file then we've got this variable win one which is creating a new instance of that function which we know is the window object so this is creating a new instance of that window so then what we do we've got this variable and this is where we're creating the tab and what you do is you have an icon for it and a title and then window so let's get the simulator up so the icon for tab 1 is this house the title is where it says tab 1 and then the window is our window object we created and that is just what is displayed here so then we're doing this this step here 
what I've added is similar to in the nav group where we will pass in the nav group to each of the windows we opened. So what we're doing here is we're putting in this parameter containing tab, we're passing it the tab object that it belongs to. The reason I'm doing that, as I mentioned, is we do that so we can open, um, I guess you could call them child windows within that, and they will know that they belong to this tab group as well. So you can have, actually, I'll show you, on window, on tab 3, I am using this um, containing tab parameter. So when we click this, we are opening this new window within that tab. So I'll go to that in one sec, but I'll just finish this. So yeah, we're passing it that object, and then finally we're adding our tab to the tab group. So we do exactly the same for tab 2 and tab 3, then we open it. So if I go to window 3 now, this is the window which is actually using that containing tab parameter. So if you have a look here, it's the same as the others, but we also have this button. So if you open that, so there's the button. It just says open win, open win. Then, um, one thing to note as well, I guess, is... If you see where it's positioned, and you might notice that I haven't put left or top here, if you don't pass it um, any positioning, not left, top, right or bottom, then it would just do it centre. So that's why that's in the centre, if you're wondering. So what we're doing is we're adding the button to the window. Then we have this simple event that on click, we're creating a new instance of this file here, which is Win4, which is just the same as the others, just spits out, um, returns a window object. So yeah, so we're creating a new instance of that, and then we are passing that, the containing tab object. So if we wanted to open another window from within Win4, we can. But the main thing to note is this here. So Win3 is our current Win. Dot containing tab, which is the tab object we pass to it in the tabs.js, if you look here. That is that. A container tab dot open and then win four, which is the new window that we opened. I hope that makes sense. But I'll open the simulator and I'll go through it again with what's happened at each step. So yes, and then that what that does is that opens an instance of this window. So let's have a look and go through this one more time then. So when the app loads, it creates the tabs and then it opens the tab group, which is this here. So we've got tab 1, which is our win 1 object, tab 2, win 2 object, and then we have tab 3. Tab 3 is the one which has um, the button which will open another window within that tab. So let's go back into win 3 again. Oops. So here is the button, and when we click this button, we do in this event, and this event is creating a new instance of a window and then using the tab object that we put into this parameter here, containing tab, to open that new window. So when we click that, it opens it as part of that tab group. So I hope that made sense. And if not, just send me a message or something and I'll, I'll try and explain it a bit better, but I think that was straightforward enough.